All right, welcome back everybody. So this is the follow-up on uh, my bow theory. We're investing a lot of points into the bow skill. Might actually be worth it. Uh, we got one bow to 60 and 55. So about, about 55 across the board. 54, but it doesn't matter too, too much. And I made a, an interesting discovery that I, maybe just an oversight on my part, but I think it's really cool. So, armors have base recovery values. Um, I don't know them off the top of my head, but, uh, you know, if you take the armor off, well, I, I'm all buffed up and everything, but whenever you put armor on in the first place, it immediately lowers your recovery value. And then that's negated, I'm pretty sure, across the board. It is. Across the board by master. So that's factored out, meaning we can wear armor and not have to worry about anything. Well, that's good. But if you have shields, that's immediately going to add more also. Uh, shields, they just get more powerful, but you keep the recovery penalty. However, whenever it comes to the bow, the more points you put into it, it reduces the recovery time, which translates to, even over here, at 55, and as you can see, a weapon and a shield, albeit a small shield, recovery time is still zero. With a large shield we're looking at, also zero. Uh, right, I'll just use the shield then. I will not use that shield. This one's better. So, I thought that was kind of an interesting discovery, because now, uh, apparently I sold her mace at some point, which is a bit of an oversight, I guess. Not a huge deal. I have extra daggers, but after I, you know, divvied out the gear, even with these two, you know, big weapons, we're still looking at zeros across the board. Now, we do have some things going for us here. We have maxed out light magic, which uh, we have the Guinevere, and we also have of light magic, so that's how we're getting up to into the six and seven hundreds, despite being, you know, in our fifties. Uh, we're hasted, and you know, you can see how powerful that is. Hour of power is lasting for five days. Day of the gods is lasting for almost a month. You know, everything's lasting plenty long enough. So, uh, very interesting discovery. I thought that was incredibly cool to see. And then after uh, we give this a try, we should have a better idea of what could theoretically be the fastest time to kill. Now, funny enough, trying this on titans and a few dragons out in the wild, I, f I found that the bows were actually better. Uh, so, part of my hypothesis was that because th uh, the fire damage isn't being applied, they might not be quite as good. Now, things that they apply to, like titans, I mean, they're melting almost instantly. It's crazy. Uh, blasters, they do more damage, but they're shooting effectively half as fast. You're only getting one projectile instead of two. And then to mitigate both of those in the middle, uh, after several runs, I was able to come up with three of acid bows, albeit one is stellar. The other two are just true crossbows, but we'll you know deal with that when it comes up. And then we have a venom one, which is good enough. I don't think that should affect anything. Yeah, still zero, so we're still fine. So, uh, we're about to give this a try and see what happens here, okay? 
So this is our arrows, and we're shooting just as fast as blasters, except for there's two projectiles. So before we get started here, we have a gold dragon here in the Temple of the Snake, and we're going to go shoot at him a little bit and see when he dies. So pretty fast. We're going to load back. Gonna give that a try with the blasters. Now with the blasters, I think I don't, I don't know if we can wear shields. I want to be as fair as possible, so I'm gonna keep on as many weapons as I can. Drop all these guys around. And we should still be at zero. We are not. I should get down to zero. Cool. That is down to zero. Nice. Zero. And zero. No, so can't use that either. So we can use the shields, but we can't use weapons. That's fine. So now we're going to try that one more time. Okay, have our time on that one, and one final attempt here. Now this one could be skewed just a little bit because these are uh, kind of a variety of bows, but I'm hoping that doesn't affect anything too, too badly. So these are acid. Acid is a... Uh, I don't think anything besides oozes and maybe uh, water elementals possibly are acid immune. So this should theoretically melt even faster. Yeah, I know that was distinctly longer. But that's kind of the follow up on where we're at with these things. Um, the gold dragon is a decent uh, representation, so it's mostly just looking at the things that Armageddon will not kill. Uh, once you factor out the red dragons, which are fire immune, albeit they are the weakest type of dragon, uh, I don't see a problem with just using uh, the of dragon stuff. Uh, gold dragons, and we can open Prima's guidebook here real fast. So I can give you uh, some numbers. Uh, let's see. So they have. They are resistant to fire. Yeah, they are resistant to fire, they are magic immune, that's fine. They have some resistance to physical, you know, so... As far as resistances go, blasters seem like to be better because that energy damage is penetrating all of their DRs, all their resistances. But then... It just seems like it works. So if you are adamant about not using blasters uh, the left lateral limit here is saying if you just simply do not want to use blasters you just don't like it then you don't have to these bows are working just fine the right lateral limit I feel like bows might actually be better uh, on the grounds that they're shooting so many more projectiles, it's I'm finding a little easier to hit stuff. Uh, with Titans. Uh, no, that kind of explains it. Titans have less fire resistance, 
Uh, the only two things you really need to worry about killing, because assuming you're using Armageddon in the first place, you're only looking at Titans and um, Gold Dragons. You're melting them just as quickly. It's a huge skill point investment, and I get that. I fully understand it. If you want to use blasters, you can put all those points into something else, and you're going to be objectively more powerful overall until you can get your bows up like these characters. Uh, but that's right lateral limit type stuff. So either add them up on ice and blasters, here's your alternative. If you're okay with blasters, you will have a more powerful character because every point that I threw into bow here would have been more valuable in bodybuilding or... Well, on a paladin, not so much, but it just would have been more valuable somewhere else, you know? So, that's, uh, that's where we're at. I want to do one more video whenever I can just simply find any type of uh, carnage bow, which is the explosive, just to see what happens. I think it'd be uh, fun just to try it. It'll be a short video. Just here's the thing. I think it's cool. I hope you all think it's cool too. And that's the idea with the of carnage. Um, of carnage will not be better than any other bow possible because they will either do the same damage, assuming something is fire immune, or they will do less damage because they're not fire immune. So that's where we're at. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the Might and Magic 6 Super Monkey Tower, and thank you all for watching. I hope to see you guys whenever I find the Up Carnage Bows. I'll see you next time.